One of the things that's really going to impact the profitability of your freelance design business is correctly estimating how long you're gonna be working on each project. In this video, we're gonna discuss strategies to do that correctly. Hey everybody, what's up and welcome to another segment of business time. And this time, it's really I've been struggling with this for years. How do you actually know correctly how long are you gonna be spending on each project? Because there is a tricky factor here. Some of that are things that do not have to do with you. You can't really predict how long they're gonna be taking, stuff like coming up with ideas. But other things are more like budgeting. How long are you gonna be spending on things like inspiration and things like that? So let's get started with the first thing that I do when I'm trying to estimate a project, which is to break down into the smallest, tiniest milestones what I need to be do in terms of tasks for this project. So let's imagine that I will be working on a web design project. And so the big milestones are probably something like, you know, planning of the website, wireframing, design, development, then launch and QA. Those are the main, let's say, breakpoint. But even in each one of them, I can start listing down. So let's say in the planning phase, I'm probably gonna have a kickoff meeting. And so I'm gonna have to be traveling to their, uh, to the client's office. I'm gonna have the meeting. I'm, I'm probably gonna have to prepare for that meeting. So now knowing what I have to do, I can really say it's probably gonna take me, you know, going there and the meeting is going to be one hour and this is going to be this. And then after that, I'm going to have to do some research. So in that case, how long do I need for this research or how much based on the badge can I afford to work on research for this project? Because obviously on different projects, sometimes you can afford more time and sometimes based on the budget, you know, you won't be able to afford. So estimating again, as I previously said, it depends on what you have to work with. It's not only the, the project itself, it's also what do you want to put in to it. So the first step again is list down every task that you have and try to estimate how long each of them and the smaller they are, the more probably accurate you're going to be. Now, if you're just starting out as a designer, you might have no clue how things are going to take you and that's okay. So probably the first time you're going to be very wrong. I still suggest that you create probably a spreadsheet with all the tasks that you think you will be doing and how long do you think they'll take you. Even if you don't have any benchmark, you're going to be wrong. It's still important to see in front of you and review it later on what you thought will happen, have some kind of an hypothesis and then see if you were wrong or if you were correct and get into the habit of doing that because you will be doing that or you should be doing that for every project for the rest of your career. So get into the habit of doing that. Of course, this spreadsheet is going to change because you're probably not even going to list down all the things that you need to do. If this is the first time that you're doing it, you have no clue. So just start with what you think you know and you'll discover everything that you don't know so you can update this spreadsheet for the next time. So this is the first thing, write it down and start tracking your time because if you didn't track your time, you're always going to be staying in that limbo. But once you track your time, even the second project, you're going to have a benchmark for it. So I discussed time tracking uh, multiple times on the channel. I had one recently that you can check here. Uh, I'm now using Timely to track my time. Before that, I was using Toggle, but you can use whatever you want. The software doesn't really matter as long as you do that and that at the end of the project, Project, and not even at the end of the project. I do that every week. You know, I review at the end of the week how long I worked on, you know, on every uh, project and seeing if I'm on track to make the estimate. And if not, maybe I'm going to have to make some changes because again, if you're... I want to stop right now and, and take a minute to discuss why it's so important to estimate correctly. If you're working on an hourly rate, which I don't recommend, but a lot of people do that, and you try to estimate and you say, okay, my hourly rate is $100 and this project, I think it's going to take me 50 hours, so it's $5 thousand dollars. If you're going to overestimate, you're going to give a high price and maybe that high price is going to be too much for your client. So it's really important to be accurate and you don't want to do it too low that the price is going to be low and you're going to be working too much. So it's really important. But even if you're working on flat 
fixed rate, flat rate, or value pricing, and you know that the budget for this project is 20k it, you still have some kind of an hourly rate that you're looking to work for um, and so you need to know that you're in this range so for me personally i have an effective hourly rate of 500 which i'm trying to aim for but i know that even if i don't make that even if i work more than that or i have less hours to work on um, then I know that I'm as long as I'm above 250 I'm still going to be profitable so this is where I'm aiming and by tracking and reviewing my time every week I know if I'm heading there or if something needs to adjust so for example if I see that on I spent more time than I've planned during the design phase for example I'm going to think how can I add, um, make the next phases shorter what can I remove from there what do I have there that is maybe either an extra or as I said something that I wanted to put in so let's say something like inspiration or research is something that you know you can determine how long you're going to be spending on that and that you can play with you can remove you can add based and, and if you see that you don't have time because you've overspent time on something else you might want to reduce that at a different stage just to make sure that you're getting to your estimate and not going too far ahead. Now, one thing that is critical when you're estimating your time is making taking buffer into account. And buffer is adding some kind of a percentage on top of that to account for everything that you can't predict at this moment. So we're all human beings and we all have this kind of a planning fallacy, which means that we think that we know what's gonna happen, we have a plan, we fantasize about, but it's usually very far from how things work. We don't, we're very positive when we're daydreaming and, and, and making plans, but reality is things are going to be more complicated there are going to be a lot of things that you forgot to think about so by adding buffer to that initial estimate you're going to take into chance uh, more things that you know you didn't think about and you're probably you're going to increase the probability of being right so um, the number that i'm using at the moment is 20 percent. so i'm adding 20 percent to my original estimation number so if that was 100 now i'm going to estimate for 120 hours and want to make sure that 120 hours is still makes sense when thinking about this project some people actually take 50% buffer, uh, but I guess it depends on you and you learn by doing what is the right number and how far you are usually deviating when from your estimation. For me, I found that 20% usually works. Now, the last thing that I think is worth mentioning in terms of this estimation is really how to use it. And I've started saying that before by reviewing it even during the pro the project and making sure that you're not going way over your original estimation. Sometimes that will happen. And to be super honest, it just happened to me last week with the project that I just wrapped up that took way more time than you know um, I was planning for. But still, as long as I made sure that I'm above what I consider profitable and as long that I, I was very aware of the fact that right now, everything that I'm doing is unprofitable and I kept that in mind. I was still putting in these time because it was really important for me to um, give good service and, and provide high quality design. But I was a very, very much aware of the fact that I'm over my estimation and every hour that I'm putting in right now is dropping, is hurting my profitability. Um, so you can make, you can be aware of that. I'm not saying that you always have to say, all right, I reached my limit. I'm going to drop the pen and stop working. But you need to be kind of vigilant in trying to protect that just to make sure that at the end of the day, you're running a business. You're not just doing it because you're passionate about this. It might have started off this way, but right now you're, you're a business. You need to be profitable. You want to hit your financial goals. And so you need to be very, very mindful of what you're actually doing versus your estimate. I hope this video was valuable for you. I'll catch you on the next video.